and you can then talk wherever you'd like to talk from. I'm going to stay right here. <laughs> but, uh, Except, how do I advance slides from here? Can I? Will I do that remote? Uh -huh. Thanks, Reynolds. Um, so, how many how many people here have have already drank the open source Kool Aid? Okay, so some some people. Uh, so this talk isn't really for you. Um, the other thing I'll ask um, at the beginning is how many people use an Android phone here or at home? So about a third ish. Okay, so we'll come back to that. So. You all um, may be familiar with the classic 1939 film, Mr. Smith Goes to an Open Source Washington. In this film, the protagonist, whose name is Jefferson Smith, played by James Stewart, um, is elected to fill the vacancy caused by the death of his predecessor in the Senate. He becomes a senator from an unnamed state, and he comes to Washington with a platform about early childhood education. Uh, let's say that's what it is from the film. Uh, but he finds, when he gets to Congress, that he has a hard time uh, getting his bill, uh, getting his legislative agenda to move forward. And as, if you're familiar with the plot of the film, it's because he lacks experience in open source software development. So Mr. Smith was um, just not familiar with, with how things worked. He didn't know how to draft a bill. And he didn't know that Ledge Council had open data and open standards that could help him do that. Uh, Mr. Smith didn't realize that um, he didn't know much about early childhood ed education. He didn't realize that there were experts lining up on GitHub already filing issues uh, that he could make use of. I'll get back to what that is for those who don't know. Um, and, um, and even in 1939, MRAs were being cut and his office could not afford to uh, buy a uh, CRM software. So he couldn't reach his constituents and he didn't realize that there was open source software that could help him do that. Um, so the, uh, the Congressional Open Source Caucus, which formed in 1938, um, of course, uh, asked him to, to join, uh, but he didn't know what it was, so he turned to his legislative director and asked her, what is open source? Um, and this, this, is what, uh, this is what the legislative director told him. So open source um, is already everywhere. It powers about 50% of all computing devices worldwide. If you use an Android phone, you're already using open source. It's not particularly um, common in enterprise-y laptop, desktop environments, so you may not see it, but it's there, it's on the internet, it's in medical devices, automotive devices. Um, and the, the idea of open source is based on the idea that not everything in life is zero sum. So here's an example of something that is zero sum. A donut is zero sum. If you have a donut, and then you give me a donut, I will love it, but also you no longer have a donut, right? We can't both have that donut. But other things are not zero sum, so knowledge is not zero sum. If you have some knowledge, and then you give me that knowledge, now we both have knowledge, and it's great. Uh, open source is kind of like that. Um, so the idea of open source is that, sorry, here we go. Um, the idea of open source is software that is made available um, with sort of these three principles, that anybody can use it, anybody can modify it, um, and anybody can share it, more or less without restriction. Um, that's what defines open source. And the idea is that every time someone uses uh, the software, every time someone shares it, and every time someone modifies the original to make some improvements, we are all better off for it. Uh, it's a very smiley, happy thing. The best open source projects also bring the idea of open into the development process itself. So it's not just whether you're allowed to use the final product, but the process that created that final product um, is, also, is also open, and you'll see more of that shortly. So back to, back to the film. Uh, so Mr. Smith, um, asked his digital director to set up Madison. And um, I don't know if it came up this morning. So Madison is open source software created by the OpenGov Foundation. Seamus was up here from OpenGov talking about uh, OpenGov earlier a bit. Um, Madison is a platform for collaborative uh, discussion and commenting on legislation. Um, and it's open source. And like mo most open source software, it's on the website github.com. Uh, GitHub is a popular place to go for open source software development. It's not the only place, but it's quite popular. Um, and a, uh, so like most open source software, Madison is on GitHub. You would, if you go there, you would see um, Madison's README file. It's literally called README, README, because it's where the project wants you to start. The README has instructions about how you too can take Madison and copy it and set it up um, and, uh, and have your own. Um, so, uh, so Senator Smith did that. 
he got his digital director to learn to read Madison's README file, read the instructions for how to set up his own madison.smith.senate.gov, and he got important feedback uh, from stakeholders about his early childhood education bill. Um, and Smith was excited and was able to move his bill forward, that next step in the legislative process. Um, let's see. So I talked about the README. Um, licensing is big in open source software. Uh, it's the thing that makes it open. Uh, but for a lack of time, I'm not going to talk about it at all. <coughs> so it's really important. I, it, it's hard to not talk about licensing when you talk about open source software, but I can't. So back to the film. Okay. So Mr. Smith, he's got his bill. He wants to keep going forward. Um, and as you, as many of you or all of you know, in order to get your bill to go forward, you got to get co-sponsors. But in 1939, the Senate had not yet published any open data about who was serving in the Senate, and Smith couldn't figure out who his colleagues were to get co-sponsors. So he went online and, uh, and found the Congress Legislators Project, which is a project I started in 2012 with uh, Derek Willis and Eric Mill um, and others, and now sort of collaboratively maintain it with MapLight and the Sunlight Foundation and on. Um, and uh, so Congress Legislators is a database of everyone that currently serves in Congress, including everyone that has ever served in Congress back to 1789. Um, it is like the bio guide, if you're familiar with that. It was originally based on the bio guide, uh, but you can see it's, it's data. So uh, it's easier to reuse. It has fields like first name, last name, birthday, and so on. Um, it is, it's not, it's not software per se. So unlike Madison, there's no real software. It's a text file. Uh, it's just one really like 10 megabyte long data file of information about members of Congress. And um, like Madison, Congress Legislators is also on GitHub. Um, and there's a README file. This is the README file where you start to see what is this project actually about. Um, there's a license file. Um, and uh, so Senator Smith went online, went to the Congress Legislators Project, downloaded it. Because it was open, he was able to reuse it. Uh, and he was able to find co-sponsors for his bill within this, within this database, which is great. Um, and he's, he's getting his bill. His bill is going be, be, to be passed. But as he's, he's looking at Congress legislators, he notices that there's a bug. He notices he's not in it. He was appointed yesterday, um, but no one added him to the database yet. So he went on GitHub and filed an issue, uh, which means clicking a few buttons, typing in what the problem was. He says, I'm not in the database. Great work, Congress Legislators Project, but why am I not here? I'm a senator. The, the next slide is actually a deleted scene from the 1939 film <laughs> in which Eric and I are responding to the senator um, and trying to figure out what, what actually was the problem. So um, in, in our project, we, we go through discussions like this. So we had a great thread on how, um, how amendments are numbered in the House how, um, why it is that Congress's changeover on January 3rd at noon, like why, where did that come from? Uh, so it, at least in civic tech in, in particular, um, these issues on GitHub are really interesting because they can be about the, the software itself. They can be about like, okay, you have a bug, let's fix the bug, kind of figuring out what that is. But they can also be about figuring out how the world works. Um, and, and we use this to have a long, dis no, no, I a discussion about um, how Congress actually works and what we can learn from it. And then the beauty is these issues are open. So when there's um, another bug in the future that's similar, we can go back and we can refer to the issue that we had the first time. And if I'm not the one maintaining it anymore, someone else who's maintaining it can come along. And all the information is there. It's in GitHub. It's kind of permanent-ish. Um, so why issues? To fix the data, to not repeat past mistakes, because it's a, it's a long-term database uh, of all your problems. Um, it lets us learn about the U.S. Congress. And then it's a space to facilitate long-term engagement. Uh, in our case, we've been doing this already for four years, plus the time that we were working on these things before GitHub. Um, I, I think we're, we're really lucky to talk about how Congress can use open source, because Congress is it's already a centuries-old institution. There are already stakeholders that have been around for decades. Um, and this is a place to facilitate the building of that uh, stakeholder community. So. Um, so right, so excited by how easy it was for him to fix a problem that he found in an open source project, Mr. Smith then decided he was going to start an open source project of his own. And he wasn't the first to do so. Even by 1939, there were thousands of, uh, maybe by 2016, there were thousands of open source projects uh, 
from the federal government, done by federal government employees already out there, many on GitHub, um, including our friends, the Library of Congress and the Government Publishing Office, already have pages on GitHub. Um, I think it's come up a few times today. There's some good discussion in those, uh, we call them repositories, um, uh, on the bulk data that Congress has been working on that came out in February. Um, it's just to sort of underscore that it's quite common. I worked with the DC Council a couple of years ago on um, creating open source tools for the publication of the municipal laws. Um, and um, so DC Council went open source uh, and a, a major open source project for how they publish the law is gonna be announced uh, this week or next week, um, which is very exciting. Um, so, uh, so Senator Smith created his first GitHub repository um, he called it, I think, I think he called it my first open source project. Um, and he was gonna build a tool that sent a telegram every time a bill was enacted. It was gonna be a, a revolutionary thing to keep constituents informed about what was happening in Congress. Um, but, um, so he built his tool, he put it up on GitHub, and then he found, okay, let me be real, open source takes work, it's not, it's not always so easy. But there's a good, better, best uh, progression, which is one of my new favorite terms, um, thanks to a friend, um, to, to open source. So he, he did, this is what he did. He did good documentation so that others could figure out how to use his project to send telegrams about bills in Congress. Um, he began to engage with users and uh, interacted with his users in the issues on GitHub. He created a mailing list so that there was a place to keep everybody informed. Uh, and he learned how to accept their help, like I showed with the issue about uh, the senator being missing from the database, uh, he was able to receive that feedback from outsiders himself. Um, the, the hardest part is really successfully cultivating a community of people uh, over a longer period of time, training people to understand how your project works, getting them uh, in the process. Um, that's, that's perhaps the ultimate of um, open source software development. So the sad thing is, of course, you can do all this and um, you may not have any users and no one may want to join your project. This isn't the sort of thing that like, if you build it, if you put it out there, they will come, right? You have to look for what's actually going to be useful to, to people and think about that. Um, one common reason why you may not have users is often folks will put things out on the net, um, but then not use it themselves internally. Um, and uh, this is called dog fooding. So you should always use your own projects that you're publishing as a part of your routine, operational, internal practices. And if you're not gonna do that, then maybe no one else will either. And, and in my story, Mr. Smith doesn't do it. And because he doesn't use his own software, he doesn't realize it didn't work. It didn't work at all. But he never tried it, so he didn't know. As soon as you try it, you figure out, oh, right. Now I know why it wasn't working. And you fix it yourself because you're using it and you have to fix it in order to get done what you need to do. And then again, it's better for everyone. Um, and I heard from, uh, hopefully I'm not spoiling anything, um, the, some House Clerk staff um, that they're starting to do a little bit of this with the data uh, that they're publishing as well, which is great. Um, so to recap the movie, in act one of, of the movie, which you will see if you go back and watch it, Mr. Smith was an open source user. He found an open source project and he figured out how the open source world works a little bit by finding something that was useful for him, bringing it into his internal operations, the Madison project, setting it up, trying it out. Um, he was a user. Then in act two, he became a contributor. He found a project, he found a bug in the project and spent a little time by filing an issue trying to make that project a little bit better. So a contributor is what in the open source world we call a participant, someone that is in some way um, putting some effort into making a project better. And then in the third act, he became a maintainer, which is the open source lingo for someone that takes responsibility for um, sort of shepherding a project forward uh, and, making it, and making it better. Uh, and in the, in the final scene of the movie, Smith and his legislative director walk off into the sunset as successful open source software maintainers. This, by the way, I was lucky, so this isn't actually, it's not a scene at all from the movie, but apparently it was a photo from the set when they were, um, it's just a photo of the actors, but it, it works perfectly for me. Um, two more slides. So uh, the first thing you can do is become a contributor, right? If you're not in the open source world at all, start by becoming a contributor. Uh, so 
uh, I'm, I'm told that whether your agency has a social media policy is probably the first thing you need to contend with. And I don't really, I know nothing about that, but it's something we could talk about in questions or later today. Um, so tomorrow, please, if you've never done this before and, and I've all excited you and you wanna be like um, James Stewart, um, you can find an open source project. I listed a few already, right? Find one and just open an issue on their GitHub page, say hello, ask a question, try and find a bug and then report it. Um, that, that is how you, how you really start. Um, then if, let's say, before next year's LDTC, you're gonna be a maintainer of some project. Uh, how do you do that? Well, in the spirit of open source, you just copy what someone else is doing, right? The whole idea of open source is the more copies, the better. You find something that, you find another project that you think does a good job at something, and you copy how they did it. And uh, if you see a readme file that has kind of good documentation, it has things that you thought were helpful for you, try and copy what they did and put that into your readme file. It is literally how we all do open source. Um, again, the two key things, we're making a readme file, um, and the licensing stuff, which I can't talk about at all, uh, but follow the link, which is something else I've worked on. And um, theme, theme, I'm done. <laughs>